Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of Just Dial Limited. We have with us today from the management, Mr. VSS Money, MD and CEO, and Mr. Abhishek Pansal, CFO. At this moment, all participants are in the listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, you may click on the raise icon, raise and icon to ask a live question. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Pansil, CFO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Justile's earnings call for fourth quarter of fiscal 22. Our operating revenue for the quarter stood at 166.7 crores, declining 5.1% year on year, but was up 4.9% sequentially. Our adjusted EBITDA, excluding ease of expenses, stood at a minor loss on account of increase in employee costs and advertising spend. Our employee expenses increased 22% year on year, led by approximately 20% year on year increase in headcount across sales, technology, content and marketing functions. Our advertising expenses stood at about 8 crores for the quarter. Other income stood at 35.2 crores and overall net profit stood at 22.1 crores. Coming to business update, FY22 as we all know started with onset of second wave of COVID-19 which had significant impact on SMEs across the board especially in B2C services. However, situation started stabilizing from third quarter and we have embarked on aggressive monthly plan monetization coupled with ramp up in sales hiring. During 4Q, we signed up about 71% customers on monthly plan basis, which was just about 23-24% last year. Our sales headcount has grown 23% on YOY basis and 26% sequentially during the quarter. We have seen monetization continuously improve significantly on month-on-month -on -month basis since November-December. Our paid campaigns grew by about 24,100 campaigns to 461,500 total campaigns at the end of the quarter. While paid campaigns are still about 14% short of pre-pandemic levels, this quarter-on-quarter -quarter edition has been highest over past several quarters and we should be closing this gap soon and growing further. Our 4Q collection stood at about 179 crores and it witnessed 19% quarter-on-quarter growth despite 70% plus deals coming on monthly plans, where upfront collections are typically lower. Consequently, deferred revenue witnessed 3.8% quarter-on-quarter increase to 338 crores. Now, since the mix of upfront versus monthly plans is changing, in order to assess how our monthly sales is panning out, we calculate or we measure what is the total annual collections that we expect to get from all the sign-ups that we have done during the quarter be it upfront plans or monthly plans. We call it realizable value, which is essentially total money that we have received from upfront plans right now and money that we expect to be received via monthly plans over next one year. This realizable value of signups that we did in 4Q has witnessed a healthy 24% year-on-year growth and 29% sequential growth. So this in a way acts as a leading indicator for us to see where our collections and future revenues are headed. Our monthly ECS collections, which is money received via direct bank debits for monthly plans, stood at about 29 crores for the recently concluded April month versus it had reached a low of 13 crores back in October 21. Further, the recent ramp up in sales hiring too should aid our monetization in coming months as we should see improved productivity of new hires as they get tenured. In a nutshell, as far as reported P&L is concerned, our top line reflects monetization uh, performance of last few quarters which were COVID impacted, whereas most of our costs essentially hit our P&L immediately. As we see our top line ramp up in coming quarters, we should see profitability improving as well. Overall, cash and investments stood at about 3,820 crores as on 31st March. Coming to operational highlights, traffic stood at 144.8 million unique users for the quarter, growing 12.2% year-on-year. On strength of database, total listings now stand at about 31.9 million. Overall, as I see, expenses have picked up in FY22 led by resumption in 
hiring for sales and various new initiatives and the resumption of our advertising recent recovery in sales should reflect in fy23 revenue which should aid recovery of profitability too the core business is clearly on a recovery path and new initiatives are currently under various stages of development and user experience enhancement with this update uh, for further discussion we shall now open the floor for questions thank you thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session to ask a question please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the q and a icon to raise hand the operator will announce your name when it is your turn to ask a question please accept the prompt on your screen and unmute your microphone while proceeding with your question it will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of pranav shatriya from edelweiss please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity uh, abhishek a uh, couple of questions uh, firstly uh, you talked about the revenue growth uh, so should we expect uh, this revenue growth uh, you know to start flowing in uh, from the q1 fy23 itself or uh, you know for the productivity uh, it will take some time Uh, and secondly uh, you know for this quarter the operating expenditure was roughly 170 odd crore rupees uh, which was broadly 140 to 150 crore rupees uh, previously uh, so should we expect uh, this operating expenditure to stay at this level or there is some one off and you know how how should it trend considering you have added uh, you know fairly uh, you know large number of employees uh, to your workforce uh, uh, and and one last question from my side will be on uh, you know jd mart can you uh, tell us you know where uh, uh, you know do the things stand in terms of the monetization of that platform uh, and at least uh, you know on various platforms you don't really see traffic for jd mart really picking up so you know uh, what is the status uh, there thank you so pranav on your first question regarding revenue growth so yes revenue growth will start showing improvement uh, from uh, Uh, coming quarters as soon as uh, one few also assuming we are able to sustain the recent momentum that we are witnessing so this particular quarter also as can be seen there is a sequential growth in revenue uh, that we are already witnessing and uh, the most recent month uh, run rate is also better than the quarterly run rate on your question around operating expenses so operating expenses definitely have picked up uh, because of significant hiring so our uh, sales headcount which had gone to as low as about 6800 employees two quarters back that is now 10000 plus and the reason of ramping up this particular sales force is that we are seeing situation stabilize on the ground and we are also seeing uh, smes willing to come back on a uh, advertising spree so while uh, hiring has uh, happened Uh, in a chunky manner this should uh, give us uh, good dividends going forward and on your query around uh, jd mart so jd mart uh, currently draws traffic in two ways one uh, the dedicated portal itself gets traffic second on justile also now we have all the uh, b2b products on justile platform itself since justile has a very strong uh, brand affinity it draws a very good amount of organic traffic so out of total about whatever 145 million users that we had last quarter a uh, decent uh, 78% of that did come for jd mart related uh, new pages that we have on both uh, platforms combined apart from that at this point of time we have over a million rich catalogs with about uh, 15 million unique products so as far as content enrichment is concerned uh traffic is concerned there is a steady improvement uh, on a quarterly basis on even monetization we currently have a dedicated uh, 400 plus uh, member team which focuses on our b2b monetization initiative a combination of both steady sales as well as feet on street so as uh, we are seeing overall business come back to normalcy we should see a uh, good contribution from b2b in coming quarters okay thank you but uh, if i can just have one follow up question uh, on on my question on cost uh, can you just tell us that you know how much of your uh, 
you know uh, gna was spent on the advertisement and how do you plan to uh, you know spend it and that's why i was looking more from a uh, you know run rate cost basis that you know how should we see the cost uh, going uh, from 170 odd crore rupees in this quarter uh, in the upcoming quarters so uh, on the cost side we spent about uh, total around 7 and 1/2 8 crores on advertising in last quarter for coming fiscal we have budgeted uh, about say 60 65 crores as full year advertising subject to this particular budget going up uh, depending on how we are faring on monetization depending on how our newer initiatives are uh, panning out and at any point of time we would take a sort of a calibrated approach in terms of core business will see more of digital spend new initiatives will see atl campaigns as and when they are at a optimal stage okay so and the excess advertisement cost uh, you know should we expect to stay at the current level given you know most of the hiring is already done so there will be uh, some hiring that we will continue to do so uh, there are certain cost optimization activities also that we are taking uh, uh, undertaking so at this point of time the thought process is that uh, we want to chase growth uh, as we saw last year uh, as well even in a covid impacted year where our top line went down by about 27 28% we were still able to have 25% plus ebitda margin so we do have cost levers which can be optimized but at this point of time when things are picking up we would want to ensure that our uh, monetization top line picks up our newer products uh, get their uh, fair share of investment and at opportune time obviously profitability should return for the core business as well as for your initiatives okay one last question from my side uh, uh, if you can comment on uh, you know the partnership with uh, reliance retail ventures uh, Or, or sorry, the synergies uh, with the parent uh, that is Reliance Retail Ventures Limited. Uh, you know, any any plans uh, on that? Uh, you know, which you can talk about. Thank you. So, uh, as we all know, RRBL already uh, uh, is on our board. We actively engage with the RRBL and even RIL leadership teams for uh, various our initiatives. For example. Uh, Uh, JD Shopping is one area where we are very closely uh, working with them. Now, uh, as far as uh, uh, synergies are concerned, there are certain uh, newer initiatives, initiatives such as a reseller plan that we uh, are learning that uh, RRVL and even Geo platforms have successfully implemented. So we would want to replicate the same for JD monetization as well. so some of these particular strategies are being closely uh, worked on by us as well as uh, rial teams uh, thank you so much that is from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of vijit jain from city please go ahead Mr. Vijay Jain, your line is in talk mode. Please proceed with your question. As there is no response from the current participant, we move to the next question from the line of Naman Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first is around. Uh, the two products that we spoke about in the last call as well uh, one is jd shopping and the second is jd experts so wanted to know uh, what's the update on jd experts how has it been picking up and on jd shopping i noticed that in the uh, just dial app uh, there is a specific tab for shopping now when i click on that tab uh, you you know you can select or search for an item or a product Uh, but then the search results will show you all the nearby shops who are selling that product uh, the option is to call that shop and place an order is this uh, how we plan to move to e-commerce uh, is this the way uh, you know our strategy is vis-a-vis -vis other players e-commerce players where you can directly place the order with from the price and the app itself so 
this is the first question if you can answer this first please sure so naman firstly on jd shopping what you see on the live platform is an existing avatar which is essentially search it uh, primarily does not have transactional capabilities however what we are doing is hyper local uh, e-commerce so at this point of time onboarding of vendors has started in uh, three cities and uh, shortly over uh, next few weeks we would have the user interface as well so the way it will work is that we will onboard vendors uh, those particular vendors will share their inventory pricing etc and then in a phase wise manner uh, both in terms of categories and geographies we would uh, uh, open it up for users to place orders get it fulfilled via either uh, third party logistics or by vendors themselves so that is how jd shopping will be coming to jd experts at, at this point of time there are multiple services pertaining to repairs category uh, and pest control services which are uh, live in uh, multiple cities at uh, this point of time the focus is on optimizing user experience so this is recent feedback that we have got uh, about uh, most of the users have rated the service uh, 4.2 4.3 on a scale of 5 so we want to ensure that we have uh, good coverage good user experience before we are able to uh, scale it further so that's a brief update on both these products okay and jd shopping when do you expect it to go live even on a trial basis for the customers so sometime in uh, 1q or uh, early 2q is what we are expecting next year this year 1q 23 the ongoing quarter or the the ongoing quarter of okay yeah okay okay and the second question is uh, so we uh, our promoter also uh, has a company called geomart which is you know which provides uh, uh, not exactly e-commerce facility but you can place orders online and all so uh, would we be competing in some way with them or how is it going to be or are we mutually exclusive in that sense so in a way we would be mutually exclusive because first of all geomart operates in uh, say uh, different set of categories the primary set of categories are say uh, grocery related uh, second most of the sales that are done on that platform are primarily uh, first party sales it's not the mom and pop stores or smes that are selling via that platform whereas just sell will be a pure 3p third party marketplace where any sme can list their products on the platform and sell through us okay okay just one more uh, clarification or a follow up on jd shopping when we plan to do a hyper local delivery uh, reliance has also done acquisition of uh, dunzo so would that help us in any way for the logistics in terms of partnering or are we going to have our own so we are integrating with uh, multiple logistics partners including danzo grab uh, a third party uh, hyper local logistics partners as well such as shadow fax shipyari uh, and at the same time we would give option for vendor uh, itself to deliver also in case vendor is uh, willing to do so so it will be a, a blended model wherein logistics will be either third party or uh, vendor himself can do it okay uh, and any take on the e-commerce uh, uh, policy that is in the works uh, what is our take on that where are we are we aligned to it or uh, as per whatever discussions have held till date so broadly as we understand that the new e-commerce policy wants the uh, marketplaces to operate as pure 3p marketplaces uh, and not as a blend of uh, 1p versus 3p so just sell as just sell since we do not intend to hold inventory in the first place so for us it's a simple straightforward thing and we would definitely be complied as a third party marketplace great great thank you so much and all the very best thank you thank you a reminder to the participants to ask a question please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the q and a icon to raise hand The next question is from the line of Vivekanand Subaraman from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. 
Uh, hi, uh, I hope I'm audible. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, one is the uh, unique visitors that we have now, 145 million. Uh, this has gone up to uh, around 157 million uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, is there any change in methodology of the reporting of unique visitors or uh, am I missing something in terms of the recovery? That is question one. Secondly, uh, if you could help us uh, understand the split of campaigns uh, by, by volume, uh, the paid campaigns by uh, volume across tier 1 and 2, uh, you know, top 8 cities and the rest of the country, sorry, top 11 and the rest of the country and uh, revenue contribution as well. So Vivek, uh, firstly on unique users, there is no change in methodology. Uh, last particular quarter, 145 million uh, uh, that we had, a uh, couple of things to be noted. One, our advertising spends, uh, especially on digital, used to be much higher when we were at 157 to 160 million run rate. So at that point of time, we were spending approximately 17, 18 crores a quarter. Whereas uh, on digital, we have spent broadly about uh, seven crores in last quarter. Second, uh, fourth quarter specifically, January month was indeed impacted due to third wave of COVID. Uh, while it did not impact our monetization much, but uh, second half of Jan uh, was uh, partly impacted as far as traffic is concerned. As we are getting into first quarter of this year, summer months anyway tend to be strong. We are seeing good uh, recovery in our organic traffic. So we should be back to pre-COVID uh, peak levels also shortly. On your second questions around campaign split, so top 11 cities, they had about 44% uh, contribution to volumes and about 64% uh, contribution to revenue. On the traffic, so uh, when you say that you have spent seven and a half crore in ANP this quarter, was it for the just dial app or was it for uh, above the line spending on uh, uh, you know to support uh, JD Mars? So it was primarily digital campaign. So if you are searching for say uh, packers and movers in Bangalore. The results that you see on third party search engines, if someone clicks on those particular results and lands on our platform, uh, that type of advertising is primarily what we did during the quarter. So that, and that would be across categories, would be for B2C as well as B2B categories. Okay, and, and uh, what about the, uh, uh, the ANC uh, that, that you have envisaged for the next year? You said it's 60, 65 crore. So, uh, Will, is it fair to assume that most of the ANP will be for the new businesses rather than for the uh, for the core business? So uh, the 60-65 crore that I mentioned, a good chunk of it we have planned for core business itself because we believe core business does require 7 to 8 percent of top line to be spent on uh, advertising spend. As far as newer initiatives is concerned, those will be calibrated as and when we think that there should be ATL spent for the same. So this particular 60-65 Pro can actually go up basis how newer initiatives are panning out. Okay, understood. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vijay Jain from City. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir, please proceed. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry about the, uh, earlier. Uh, I think my sound was on mute. Yeah, my first question is just a clarification. Uh, you said the 4Q collections were at 179 crore. Did I get that right? Yes, that's right. And uh, sorry, I don't have the uh, trend rate on that. If you could give the trend rate on that, that would be great. So 4Q collections of 179 crores were uh, up about uh, uh, one second. So they were up about 19% uh, sequentially and okay. they were uh, down about 10% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. Got it. 
Yes, yeah, that's because of the mix, I guess. My second question is, uh, uh, you know, this uh, on your relationship and the plans with Reliance Retail, if I think about uh, it in this way that, you know, you could do B2B business, which is, I guess, what you were referring to when you mentioned the reseller opportunity and then the B2C services, e-commerce, and then the whole shopping thing. Uh, how would you how would you prioritize those in terms of what is most important for you guys to do in collaboration with them first? I mean, is there a priority order there, or the plan is to uh, hit all those three things in line and align them kind of with what Reliance Retail is doing? So, Vijit, uh, the first priority obviously is to get the core business, uh, which is our cash cow, back on track ASAP. And uh, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, uh, the traction is already very much visible. Mm -hmm. Now, the reseller plan that we propose is mainly to be able to support this particular core business itself in terms of reaching out to as many SMEs as possible across India. While okay. so far we have been reaching them out via our own employees, we think that we could get a much wider reach if we get uh, freelancers to actually uh, get us customers and our team shall primarily focus on farming those customers to uh, higher levels. As mm -hmm. far as the other initiatives are concerned, we have initiated them. Some of these projects are uh, highly promising, but they will take time for user experience to get stabilized, especially considering there are uh, vertical players uh, out there. So both things will uh, happen simultaneously with dedicated teams in place. Good. Uh, thanks, Abhishek. Abhishek, uh, one just last clarification from my side. I think uh, you mentioned 44% contribution uh, to revenues and 64% to campaigns uh, for tier two and below cities, right? 44% to revenues and 64% to campaigns? No, sorry. 44% uh, contribution to campaigns and 64% to revenue by top 11. So top 11, oh, okay. they have a right. higher share to revenue, 64%, yeah, yeah. but they form 44% of by volumes. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. And but just sorry, one final question if I can put a sandwich add in. Uh, so you said uh, 400 member B2B focused uh, Salesforce team. I think last quarter this was about 180 to 200. Uh, and you have added about 2,000 employees in this quarter. Uh, can you give a brief of uh, where your tech staff currently stands at? Total tech staff, I think it used to be 300, 350 about a couple of quarters back. Yeah, so the tech team also has been ramped up. Total tech team strength is about uh, 450 plus employees right now. Okay, correct. Great. Uh, thanks, Abhishek. Those were my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is a follow-up from the line of Pranav Shatriya from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Abhishek. Uh, uh, I just want to know that, uh, you know, you talked about 60, 65 crore rupees. Uh, you know, will bulk of that uh, be spent on the, uh, the you know, the, the digital campaigns or, uh, you know, you want to continue uh, some of that? Because I remember, uh, you know, you had not spent the entire amount which was allocated for uh, JD Mart, uh, you know, during IPL. Uh, so, uh, any any color on that? So Pranav, at this point of time, we have a uh, full-fledged uh, marketing team which specializes both on digital as well as uh, ATL advertising. So the core business, while we think that uh, digital gives the uh, decent good ROI, but we would not be averse to ATL spends uh, as well. So I'm sure 50-60% of this will surely go towards digital, could be higher also for core business. Okay. Uh, and my, uh, you know, the second question is regarding, uh, you know, you talked about this uh, committed revenue, uh, which, uh, which uh, you know, which has grown. Can you give a Q on Q how it has grown, uh, you know, just to get a sense on, uh, you know, what is the traction in, the, uh, in that, because that is not getting reflected in the unearned revenue anymore. Right. So, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, this particular... Uh, uh, committed revenue or what you call as realizable value grew about 27% quarter on quarter. And uh, on a Y1 basis? 
on a YOY basis, it had about 19% growth. Okay. And, and I mean, because there is no history of this, I mean, you know, the, should that be considered as a, you know, the, the indicator of, uh, you know, what could be potentially the revenue growth? Uh, uh. Right. So, the uh, key reason of discussing this particular uh, metric was that the two metrics that so far uh, get disclosed, one is the P&L revenue, P revenue, that is obviously a sort of lag indicator that reflects uh, what we sold over past few quarters and second is collections which we uh, can even calculate via deferred revenue and revenue metrics and collections in a monthly plan environment does get uh, affected. So my sense is that this we to evaluate the monthly performance of our business actively track this particular realizable value metric. If this metric continues to sustain uh, with the kind of growth trends that we are seeing definitely we should see our uh, top line growth also uh, converging to these particular growth rates. Sure. Well, thank you so much. That is from my side. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants to ask a question. Please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the Q&A icon to raise hand to ask a question. The next question is a follow up from the line of Vivekanand Subaraman, Subaraman from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank, you. thank you for the follow up opportunity. Just a couple of questions. So, uh, extending the uh, discussion on the realizable value, uh, would you have a sense of where you had reached in terms of realizable value uh, prior to COVID and uh, how far are we from that level? So prior to COVID, on a quarterly basis, uh, our realizable value used to be about uh, 235 crores a quarter. And for last quarter, we did about uh, 230, 232 crores. So almost uh, very close in that sense. Okay, so what you are saying is that our revenue number should also now uh, soon go back to the pre-COVID uh, levels, say sometime in the first quarter itself. Is that a fair assessment given given this, uh, given this strong trend in improving uh, realizable value? Okay, so let us understand this conceptually. So if I sell a upfront payment plan to a particular customer today, I get the entire money upfront and if it's a typically annual contract, I recognize that it as revenue over next four quarters, over next 12 months. If I sell it as a monthly plan, I get say two months of down payment and rest 10, 11 months, 10 months of payment come via monthly uh, ECS every month. However, accrual of that particular money also happens on a monthly basis. So whatever trends we are seeing, it will not reflect immediately as that particular pre-COVID run rate over next quarter. It will happen over next say uh, three to four quarters. There should be a quarter on quarter improvement assuming these particular uh, growth rates sustain for coming months as well. Uh, okay, I think I understood a bit better. Uh, and, and if you uh, talk about, uh, you know, you, you spoke about what percentage of the subscriptions are monthly. I think you said 71% versus 27%. and. Uh, is this, is this on a on an overall paid campaign basis or the new paid campaigns that you are adding? Just just to clarify on that. So 71% was whatever new signups that we did in last quarter. On overall paid campaign basis, obviously it will take time for that percentage to increase. That currently stands at about 30 to 33%. So after 461,000 paid campaigns that we have. Uh, monthly payment based would be 32-33% out of that, which had gone to say about 22-23% uh, uh, two quarters back. Are there any discounts still that uh, that the uh, SMEs are getting on Veltile uh, versus uh, pre-COVID? No, at this have... point of time we have withdrawn almost uh, all discounts. So what we encourage the customer is to sign up on a monthly plan basis and when uh, sign ups are happening on a monthly plan basis, typically there is uh, hardly any discussion that happens on discounts. Okay. 
and uh, okay, this which for uh, and and when you uh, look at the realization on uh, that that you report, uh, that number uh, is that number is around three thousand six hundred, right? And and compared to you know prior to COVID, it was around four point seven, four point eight k, right? So uh, why is it that the average realization is lower now despite there being no discount? Is it because of the mix trade only, or is there any other factor here that uh, we need to consider? Okay, so the realization, quarterly realization that you are calculating is basis uh, reported quarterly P&L revenue divided by number of campaigns. Now okay. we have to understand that the reported revenue is basically coming from uh, customers who signed up over last four quarters because revenue recognition happens over the tenure of the contract. The realization that we is basis what is the realization of customers that I signed up in last quarter. So what I signed up in last quarter was about 18,000 rupees on an annual basis which was similar to pre-COVID levels. As we move into future quarters when uh, revenue improves at that point of time this particular realization will start improving. Uh, understood. I This is uh, very clear. Just one last question uh, if I may. So uh, the 13,300 headcount that we have, uh, would you have a sense of the split across the four business, AD Mart, Experts and Shopping at an aggregate level, not just the sales people? So, uh, primarily we do not segregate it by business because there are certain functions which are common across businesses. So, out of the total sales team, as I mentioned, about 400 are dedicated uh, for JD Mart. Then in our uh, technology and content teams, there are certain teams which work dedicatedly on newer initiatives. So right now, I won't be in a position to specifically mention number for core versus non-core employees. Okay, no, this, this is very helpful. Uh, your explanation uh, made it very clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the Q&A icon to raise hand to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Ameya Karambilkar from Kotak Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening and thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, so this quarter, you know, we've seen a strong sequential addition of around 24,000 paid campaigns. So on a sustainable basis over the next three to four quarters, uh, can we sort of see that you can maintain a 20,000 uh, campaign addition per quarter kind of run rate? So Amir, uh, this particular quarter, yes, campaign addition was strong. Uh, considering we aggressively sold on monthly payment plans and that is getting good traction. Uh, assuming we continue to get similar traction, yes, uh, it is very much uh, possible. So our peak campaigns were at about 536,000. So if we want that we exit the year at that particular level, definitely we should be able to uh, add at that particular uh, run rate. Uh, got it, great. And secondly, of course, you know, this quarter, because of <coughs> the strong hiring that we did, margins were uh, sort of impacted. But on a more normalized basis, what are the kind of margins that you're sort of aspiring for over the next three to four quarters? Any sense or any perspective on that would be helpful. Thanks. See, I won't comment on next three to four quarters. Historically, last, uh, say, uh, three to four years, as everyone has uh, can see we have the core business has delivered 25 to 30 percent EBITDA margin. So 30 percent adjusted EBITDA margin is very much doable by this particular business. This particular year, since we are on a aggressive hiring spree, uh, margins will be relatively uh, subdued. Uh, also because of uh, newer initiatives that we are uh, undertaking. But uh, as uh, monetization uh, ramps up. I think margins so owing to operating leverage that the business has should uh, start to see recovery as well. 
perfect thank you so much thank you thank you this is a reminder to the participants to ask a question please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the q and a icon to raise hand to ask a question the next question is from the line of abhishek rati uh, sorry uh, rishi podar from dunsari investment please go ahead hi uh... Hi, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am, please proceed. Yeah, hi. Sorry, uh, so I don't know if I missed uh, this. I just wanted to understand a bit on the strategy and the synergies uh, with the parent. Uh, that are there any merger prospects or how does Lance, uh, you know, retail want to take this uh, forward? So just wanted to understand uh, in more details regarding the synergy benefits and the uh, strategy on that front. So, Jessie, as uh, I mentioned in my uh, earlier comments at this point of time rrvl's involvement is primarily at board level uh, just i'll continues to operate as a independent uh, listed entity we are in active uh, discussions on uh, what all synergies uh, can be exploited now the key focus is to get the core business back on track as soon as possible in the core business to aid our particular monetization we are in the process of uh, uh, evaluating and rolling out reseller model this particular reseller model has been successfully implemented by rrvl and geo platforms so that should help us reach out to much more number of uh, smes pan india which would help our monetization secondly there are certain newer initiatives that are being undertaken such as uh, hyper local e-commerce so in those particular initiatives also we could uh, uh, gain from synergies in terms of the SME reach that uh, Reliance Retail Platform has. Right. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naman Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Just uh, one more question from my end. Uh, I wanted to know how do we plan to utilize the large cash reserve that we have. Uh, where exactly the company you know plans to u utilize it because it's been already clarified that uh, it is not going to be distributed to the shareholders. Uh, so how is it going to be utilized? So Naman, at this point of time, the uh, cash balance that we have, the thought process is that uh, whenever this cash is required for initiatives pertaining to product building, content enrichment, and marketing of some of our uh, newer initiatives, part of it will get utilized. Uh, the good part is the core business uh, is free cash flow generating. So part of that support can directly come from incremental free cash flows that core business uh, will generate. Uh, so at uh, this point of time, this is uh, uh, what we have uh, in mind in terms of using this part of this cash for newer initiatives. And as okay, so in case that is any change in situation in future, we will uh, uh, let you know. Okay. So, does this also mean that, you know, uh, suppose when you launch uh, the hyper-local uh, product that we have, uh, you may start offering some discounts to attract customer base uh, or gain market share? See, at that point of time, we will evaluate uh, whether, say, some bit of discounting versus advertising, what is uh, advisable. Uh, from day one as a company, we are clear, we don't want to uh, give incentives solely to buy consumers such that today the consumer is coming, seeing those dis uh, discounts and incentives, and tomorrow as soon as discounts disappear, those users disappear. So uh, a blend of uh, good ATL advertising and uh, mix of discounting to get users to use your platform would be a prudent strategy. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Motwani from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, Abhishek, my question is on uh, JDMR. 
So we have had this setup for JD Mart where we have invested in technology, have invested in sales and aspects and everything. But just wanted to understand where is the strategy lying? What is the strategy, you know, for taking this forward? Is it that you know we are finding it difficult to penetrate the B two B services market because uh, clearly some of our competitors are making good traction uh, with many SMEs coming on board. So where is the difficulty lying currently for you? Is it like in the, on the pricing or you know on the penetration of uh, of being dif- uh, having difficulty in penetrating this market? Uh, I understand that you know in some of the previous calls you said that you know. Uh, the idea is to bring them as customer of either just that or jd mart but having a separate setup or you know a complete setup a complete website for this is there any strategy for jd mart in particular thanks so why there is no specific uh, difficulty in uh, uh, monetizing etc for jd mart we need to understand that uh, b2b category contributed uh, about say 20% of uh, just sales revenue and uh, while we were implementing jd mart at the same time we were impacted by these two waves of uh, covid most importantly the second wave which impacted our uh, the rest uh, 75 80% business as well so at this point of time endeavor is to get that particular b2c segment b2c services segment back on track as soon as possible at the same time keep uh, enriching jd mart content that enriched content is driving traffic and also keep gradually building a monetization team which uh, is now a 400 450 member team so it's not that we want to just go after b2b monetization sacrificing b2c overall we want the entire whatever 650 crore that uh, top line that we had for last year to reach uh, pre covid levels uh, as soon as possible as so do you envisage like you know a contribution from b2b increasing with over period of time like is that your focus like you know to have increased contribution while at the same time also having traction in b2c so definitely so even for recent quarters that 20 22% contribution wise went to 25 26% but that was primarily because the b2c side was more impacted versus the b2b once uh, uh, the overall business comes to pre covid levels thereafter it will be interesting to uh, see that the growth so incremental growth will possibly be driven more from b2b categories uh, versus b2c okay sure thanks that was helpful thank you thank you the next question is from the line of abhishek rati from millennium, uh, millennium partners please go ahead hi thanks for taking my question so uh, abhishek my first question is on the synergies with the parent again so uh, uh uh you know i understand from your previous answer that there will be synergies on the vendor side uh are there going to be synergies on the traffic side also given that your platform attracts a certain amount of traffic and the parent has a bunch of traffic how would the traffic synergies work the traffic synergies in my assessment obviously just like platforms are uh, stand alone platforms in itself traffic synergies could be if we could uh, Uh, leverage some of their platforms to get uh, more app downloads that in turn could uh, increase the uh, usage of our particular platform so those could be certain areas uh, where we could uh, get their particular users to have uh, just style uh, platforms uh, as well so you mean like an app in app in geo mart uh, my geo something of that sort yeah there could be multiple things there could be for example you have the geo uh, ecosystem my geo app uh, where uh, uh, there are multiple uh, uh, reliance apps there so there could be uh, jd app there as well even on the uh, retail side wherever possible uh, jd app could be uh, put in places uh, which could help which could aid the download of jd app so those are some of uh, the things that could be worked upon understood and uh, my second and last question was on uh, so uh, in terms of the capital that you are allocating in terms of investment in jd shopping you would have a certain road map right in terms of uh, what your monetization plan is so if you could share some uh, something along the lines of the potential you no know, tam the kind of gmv that you could be look at looking at or anything along those lines that would be very helpful to understand the size and scale of your ambition so abhishek size and scale of this particular uh, 
uh, venture, I would say that we all are aware that uh, uh, the kind of GMVs uh, players like uh, Amazon, Flipkart, etc. are doing. And uh, even at that scale, India is still uh, in very nascent stages of people doing online shopping. So as far as scale is concerned, I mean, I think uh, e-commerce shopping is probably the largest e-commerce uh, vertical that is out there in India. At this point of time, we are focusing on onboarding vendors, uh, getting our flow right, getting our process right. So once we get that, uh, see that particular traction, I think uh, it is a bit too early to be able to comment uh, uh, what kind of GMEs we are targeting. Definitely, as a sector, there is a, a huge potential for this particular vertical. Got it. This is very helpful, Abhishek. Just last thing, if I understood right, uh, the launch for JD Shopping will happen at some point in this quarter or the next quarter, right? Yeah, so currently, as I said, that we are onboarding vendors, and uh, as a pilot, we would open it for uh, users as well to place orders. That particular pilot should take place sometime in this or next quarter. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants to ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the Q&A icon to raise hand to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Lavanya Totalia from UBS. Please go ahead. Ms. Lavanya, your line is in talk mode. Kindly go ahead with your question, please. As there is no response from the current participant, we move to the next question from the line of Naman Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, just one small clarification. The JD Shopping pilot launch that you mentioned, uh, I assume this is for three cities that you are targeting. Which are these three, three cities? Can you please, uh, uh, you know, help with that as well? Uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants to ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the QA icon to raise hand to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Bansal for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you everyone for joining us. In case you have any further queries, please do reach out. Uh, we would do our best to address. Uh, that's it from our side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Just Dial Limited, that concludes today's session. Thank you for your participation. You may now click on the exit meeting to disconnect. Thank you.